Hi, this is Jane with Heart of Home Cooking, and I'm so glad that you've entered into my world. And today I'm going to be fi fixing you. That's what we say in Texas is fixing. I'm going to be cooking you some chicken and dumplings and a upside down apple spice cake, which is going to be easy and delicious. Now stay tuned. Looking forward to seeing you in a few minutes. This is going to be all about Texas love. And I want you to feel loved today. I want your soul to be comforted with this food. And, and I hope you feel the love coming through into your home. And as you cook this food, knowing that you are loved and you're appreciated. If you cook from the heart, I guarantee you that your food is going to be good. Welcome back to Heart of Home Cooking with Jane where love is the main ingredient. And before I begin to cook chicken and dumplings for you, I want to share with you a life recipe. We all need it. We've all been through the ups and the downs like a roller coaster, and we need encouragement. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this show is to teach you how to cook, but also teach you how to live and to live a victorious life. So I'm going to open my recipe box for life recipes and I'm going to share with you. The disciples gave to the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. They picked up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 full baskets. There were about 5,000 men who are, who ate. Besides, you know, I'm going to put on my glasses because I'm having a difficult time reading my own handwriting. You ever felt that way? Okay, we're going to go with the broken pieces, 12 full baskets. There were about 5,000 men who ate besides women and children. Well, today I'm going to share with you about multiplication in our own life. But right now I'm going to get to cooking chicken and dumplings so we can eat it after a while. Okay, we're going to turn on the stove. We're going to put some butter in there. And that's about two tablespoons of butter. And so... We're melting the butter, and then I'm going to put celery. Uh, this is about a, a fourth of a cup of celery and a fourth of a cup of carrots that I'm going to be sauteing. And then I, I've already cooked the chicken. So, you know, uh, on TV, you don't have that all that time to cook at least a whole chicken. And so I have broth already cooked, and I have uh, pieces of chicken already pulled. And a uh, secret ingredient that I used, my mom used, was cream of chicken. So here we go. Let me get this in. And we're going to put this in, and we're going to let that saute for a few minutes. Now, my husband and I have a ministry called Unconditional Love Ministries, and we're based in Israel. Uh, we live up north near the Lebanese border, uh, and we do see missiles occasionally, but none of them ever come our way. God is protecting us. But we're right there by the Mediterranean Sea, and I cook quite often over there, uh, especially when I come across Americans who uh, miss their home cooking from America. I'm from Texas, and uh, this was a famous dish. My mom would fix this. At least we thought it was famous, and you'll find out when it comes to the dumplings. It's not like uh, dumplings that anybody makes. And um, so we uh, have been living there off and on since, oh, I have, 1988. My husband's from Jerusalem, so he's been living there all of his life. And we also live in Texas. And uh, I'll be showing you a lot of Texas foods, southern foods. And, um, yeah, I think that's pretty good sautéed. We're going to go ahead and put the broth in. Now, when I first uh, started cooking about 15, I didn't know how to cook. I made such a mess because Mom would always do the cooking. That's about two cups of broth. Uh, yeah two, two and a half, maybe three cups. So I'm going to let that, I mean, just put that up. I came from a poor family, and so did Michael in the old city. He was in the Christian quarters. Uh, he was a, born a Palestinian in the Christian quarters of Jerusalem, and there were about seven people who were in a two-room house. 
and uh, they didn't have a uh, lot of money to go out and buy food, uh, so they had to just buy it daily and bring it in. And also, I came from a poor family in Texas. There was four of us girls who laid in, in the same bed, uh, head, feet, head, feet. And mom would cook us delicious meals, but they were uh, simple meals like chicken and dumplings. And now I've added uh, the carrots and the celery myself. I really like it with that. And so I'm going to go ahead and put the pieces of chicken in, get that going. Yeah, that's, this is going to be a scrumptious meal. So we had a uh, situation where we were in the Philippines, because we go to the Philippines quite often on a mission trip. And uh, we were in 2008, and we felt that we were to get an apartment because we were there a lot, and the hotels are very expensive anywhere that you go. Uh, the Philippines are a little less expensive. We needed a place to stay. So we had some money from offerings that we had received there, and we needed $300 more. And we tried to get money out of an ATM machine. We couldn't do it. You know, it was, uh, they weren't adaptable to uh, the bank here in America. So we met our friend who was getting the apartment for us, and we said, you know, we don't have $300. Well, she said, let me count it. And she counted it. And but behold, three hundred dollars appeared. It's just like those fishes and loaves. The Lord provided, and you know, I just want to be, uh, I want to, I want to be very encouraging you today because people in the economy that we're living in. Uh, one of the things that they're having problem with is with finances and paying bills and maybe even putting food on the table. But you know, the Lord is faithful. Just seek Him. Maybe you don't even know. Jesus, Yeshua in Hebrew, but he is so faithful and he loves you even if you don't love him and even if you don't know him, but if you did know him, you would love him. And uh, today on this show, I believe by the time we get through, and I'm going to pray for you at the end, that you're going to feel so loved and so taken care of. Now, I don't want to forget the secret here is cream of chicken soup. Okay, let's get that going. Mm, this is going to be so good. This is a very inexpensive meal. I just got a chicken, a frying chicken. I think it cost me like $4. And, of course, celery and carrots don't cost anything. And the cream of chicken soup, I, well, it's under $2. So this is a very inexpensive meal uh, to fix. And it can feed several people. Now, this batch will probably feed uh, five to six people. And, um, oh, that is lucky. Wow, it's smelling delicious, too. Well, you know, we better get going on our dumplings, so I'm going to move this over to the side. Now we're going to get all of our ingredients for our dumplings, and I am so excited. First of all, we're going to start with an egg. Now, there's not many recipes out there that uses egg, but I do. And my mom did, and it just it's really makes it fluffy. Now I'm going to beat it up with a fork just, just to get it broke up. Okay, there we go. Then I am going to put in two cups of flour. And I'm just, this is self-rising flour, by the way. That's the reason you don't see me putting baking powder in it, salt. And I just stir it up. And I would say that's probably a cup and a half. Uh, and what I do is I look at it to see how it looks. Oh, that's, to me, a little too stiff. Mom always taught me that um, this is like biscuits, only with an egg. And she always taught me to kind of make it wet. Now, some people use a, a pastry sheet to uh, roll their dumplings out or their pie crust, but I am going to use just a sprinkle on the board. It's really easy. And you know, this is not expensive. Now, for those of you who are diabetics, you, you might just want to put some noodles in this and just eat a few. But these are sure, or just eat one or two of these dumplings. They're really good. All right, we're gonna take that fork out and I try not to get myself all messed up. Okay, there you go. 
Now, what I'm going to do is sprinkle a little bit more. Now, the, it's boiling, the broth with the cream of chicken in it. And, uh, you know, I forgot to put some pepper and a little bit of salt. I don't need much because the uh, can of cream chicken is salty. But it, we want it to be a, have a little bit more flavor of salt in it. Now, here we go. Now if, now, if you want to know how to do biscuits without the egg, this is how you do it. Now, it makes it fluffier whenever you put, I put milk in it. Some people put water. They make it more like a pie dough, but not me. I really like to taste my dumplings fluffy. And, I'll, you know, you can use a rolling pin, but for today, I'm going to flatten them out. That's what I normally do anyway at home, always, in, you know, at home and, when I go over and cook in somebody else's kitchen, I ask them, can I make a mess on their cabinet? All right. Let's pat it down just a little bit more. It needs to be a little bit thicker. Now, this is a great meal for you to invite some people over. You could always double the recipe. And by the way, you can find the recipe on uh, heartofhomecooking.com. And uh, what you do is you cut, and you can... Um, Use all-purpose flour and just put the other ingredients in it. So we're going to put it in, in here, these dumplings, and come back and taste it with us. We're going to have that uh, upside-down apple cake. See you in a few minutes. Like many of you, Jane Nasralla has experienced many of life's difficult challenges. In 2007, Jane had a prophetic vision from the Lord. She saw herself cooking her favorite recipes and sharing her miraculous testimonies with the world. She knew that cooking would be a way to share the heart of the Father and touch many lives the way the Lord has touched hers. Now, you can bring that same warmth into your home with Jane and Heart of Home Cooking. Jane has cooked for her family and friends all of her life, and now she wants to bring the love and healing to you and your family. For more information on how you can bring Heart of Home Cooking to your next event or church function, visit www.heartofhomecooking.com. You can find updates, recipes, and cooking products. Send prayer requests or give personal feedback about Jane's recipes. Join Jane at heartofhomecooking.com. We want to hear from you. Welcome back. We're going to check these chicken and dumplings and see how they're doing. Better have a pot holder so you don't burn your hand. Oh, wow. Those are so good. They're done. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn them off, and we're going to get going on this apple upside-down spice cake. And this is my own recipe. I am using a cake mix, uh, which I think is okay. Sometimes you just don't have time to just put all those ingredients together. But we're going to first start with our apples. And I have about, oh, five apples sliced. Not too thin, like that. And so we'll put that there. And then now we're going to put uh, around a cup of sugar and some cinnamon, and we'll put a pinch of salt, and maybe another pinch. How about that? And then you just mix it up with your hands. I like to use my hands. You know, I got a lot of love in my heart, so when I cook you food and I mix with my hands, guess what you're getting? All that love. I love to love on people, and this is one of the reasons I'm cooking and I'm doing this show. So. When you turn me off, you're going to feel so loved and have some de delicious meals. All right, let me just wipe my hands here. Now what we're going to do is I have a pie pan, but I'm using it as a cake, all right? And so I'm going to put some melted butter. I'd say this is about uh, about a fourth of melted butter in the pan. And then I'm going to lay the apples down. Oh, this is going to be so good. Look at all that. 
Now, again, if you're watching your ways, you want to be sure just to take a little bit of this because we are going to put some delicious vanilla ice cream on it while it's hot. And so you want to just eat a little bit, but if you don't have any problem with your weight or with blood sugar, then just eat to your heart's desire. But don't eat yourself to sleep because that's what it'll do if you eat too much sugar. I'm just going to use this and put in there. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to set this side, and I'm going to put this right here out of the way. And I'm bringing this bowl over, and we're going, and this is a half of um, cake mix, spice cake mix that you can use. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to crack my eggs. You're going to have two eggs in there. Whoops, sorry about that. Let me get my, oh, let's see, I think I can get a fork right out of here and use it. And just beat it, the egg up a little bit. You know, I just love to cook. I mean, I've cooked all over the world almost. Um, I really haven't been all over the world, but where I have been. And I like to cook for people and make them feel like they're appreciated and they're loved and that's the reason I say love is the main ingredient. Now we're going to put some, uh, about a fourth a cup of water. And we're going to mix this up real good. This is really simple. It's not difficult. I like things that aren't difficult, but yet tasty. And this is going to be really tasty. Now I don't beat too, too hard because I don't want my flabby arms to shake. So, you know. I got to get a trainer and get all tuned up, but at 60, do I really want to do that? Mm, I don't know. I don't know if I'll really do that or not, but who knows? So don't make fun of my shaky arms, okay? All right. You know, you could do this anywhere that you're at. I mean, in any country, you can find spice cake and apples. All right. Now we're going to just put this back over here. And then what we're going to do is just pour this on top of the apple mixture. And it's, you know, kind of like a um, cobbler in a way, but because it's a cake mix, it's a, it's a little bit more fluffier and it's not as dense as if you just mix flour and um, I'm trying not to beat your ears off with this. Okay, let's set that back over there. Wow, there we go. This is wonderful. Mm, I can already smell the spices in here, and it's going to be so scrumptious. Now, this is something that you can make if you just have people over for tea or coffee uh, and serve and enjoy and fellowship and have a good time together. Now, I'm going to put some dabs of butter on it. I am a butter person. And I know for those of you who are watching your weight and watching your fat, but you know, I've heard or read that margarine is worse for you than butter is. And so I don't use margarine. They say margarines can make more cholesterol, but I'm not an expert here, so don't take my word for it. Okay, I think that's enough. Well, what we're going to do, I'm going to wipe my hands again, and we've got an oven of about 375, and I would say probably... 40 minutes, but you just, you know, you put a knife through it and see if the cake is done. And the apples will uh, just absorb that cake and that sugar and butter, and it's going to be so tasty. So let me go over here and put this in. There we go. Well, I tell you, this is just, this is fun. I enjoy cooking for people all the time. And, you know, I want to just encourage you that with the holidays coming up, uh, to invite some people to your home. Um, maybe they've lost their mother, their father, siblings, children, and or maybe just really lonely and they're, they don't have family around. And, you know, it's really easy. Chicken dumplings and, and uh, this spice cake. I mean, that's such a simple dish for you to fix and to really show love to people that you don't even know. Sometimes we just want to invite people that that we're familiar with and that we know. But, you know, we need to reach out to those that we don't know. Of course, we need to be safe and not just uh, invite just anybody. 
but especially in your church, you can find somebody there. And so we want to encourage you to love on people through your food. And remember, love is the main ingredient. So when you cook, you want to be sure you're putting love in it. I say to people all the time, now, if you're angry uh, at someone and you're going to cook for them, don't cook. Just have a call and have a pizza brought in or go out and eat. But, you know, that love is what's going to make that food taste good. It's going to uh, make the food just taste delicious, even if it's really not, even if it's simple. I can put uh, frozen fish in the oven and fix box macaroni and cheese. Of course, I add a little extra to it. And I, my family goes, oh, my gosh, that is the best I've ever had. I said, really? You know, but, but it's because I put love in it. So I want to encourage you today to cook a meal. You know, maybe this chicken dumplings or the upside apple uh, cake, uh, upside down apple cake, or whatever your favorite is. But be sure you put love in it and pray for the people that you're cooking for. Well, we look forward uh, to you coming back, and we're going to ha have some of this chicken dumplings and some of this upside down cake. Like many of you, Jane Nasrallah has experienced many of life's difficult challenges. In 2007, Jane had a prophetic vision from the Lord. She saw herself cooking her favorite recipes and sharing her miraculous testimonies with the world. She knew that cooking would be a way to share the heart of the Father and touch many lives the way the Lord has touched hers. Now, you can bring that same warmth into your home with Jane and Heart of Home Cooking. Jane has cooked for her family and friends all of her life, and now she wants to bring the love and healing to you and your family. For more information on how you can bring Heart of Home Cooking to your next event or church function, visit www.heartofhomecooking.com. You can find updates, recipes, and cooking products. Send prayer requests or give personal feedback about Jane's recipes. Join Jane at heartofhomecooking.com. We want to hear from you. You ready to uh, enjoy this meal with me? So we're going to start out with chicken dumplings, and I'm going to uh, just put that over there. Oh, there it is. And I'm going to just dip it into the bowl. Wow, look at that! Isn't that good? Mm. Wow, that's delicious. Now, I tell you what, we're going to let that cool off a little bit because if you eat it right now, it scorch my mouth. And then I'm going to, you know, I have just used my plate for my pie. Well, go figure. That's Jane for you. I like to call them senior moments, but I don't like to admit I'm really a senior. In fact, I looked at a new place the other day, possibly to be here, uh, you know, and 55 and over. I'm like... I don't know if I want to stay there or not. Am I really 55 or over? So what you do is come out of um, the oven, and it's done. It comes out clear with a knife, and so I'm just going to turn it over and be careful with it. Wow. It's like a pineapple upside down cake. Just let me give it a minute or two. Wow. Mmm, doesn't that look good? Delicious. I'm going to go ahead and put that spoon in there. Let's cut it. I wish I had somebody here to, to eat it with. I'm going to eat this all by myself. Well, I'll be sure to save most of it for when company comes. You know, this has just really been a pleasure for me. In fact, I was just sharing yesterday with someone about Heart of Home Cooking, and, and they said, you're so excited and so enthusiastic. And uh, they said, we, we just feel such joy coming from you. But I really do enjoy cooking. And to come and to be able to come into your home and show you my recipes that are simple. Again, I'm not a gourmet cook. I'm not a professional chef. But I've been in the food business since I was 14, started out washing dishes and, and became a cook after that. I was promoted to cook. Can you get that? After washing dishes and then waiting on tables and 
just begin to experiment with recipes and ask my mom to help me and to show me. And we had such great times. My mom's in heaven now, but the memories of us cooking together for the family get-togethers for Christmas, for Thanksgiving, those memories are so precious. Maybe you've lost a loved one. Maybe your mother or your father have gone on to hopefully to heaven. Uh, maybe you've had a child who has passed on or even a, a, a mate, a spouse, uh, and you've got some good memories. Well, you know, I want to encourage you today to really um, Focus in on those good memories and not focus on the loss, the loneliness. And, you know, I want you to uh, in, decide to enjoy life. That's what I've done. Uh, both my daughters have gone on to heaven before me and uh, my mom and my dad. But I have chosen to focus on the love of Christ for me, the love of Yeshua for me, and also his love for others. And um, that's how I live my life, and that's where the joy comes from. I have a nursing background. I, I stopped nursing in 1997 and went into full-time ministry, which I became a nurse of the heart instead of the physical body. Uh, but on more of these shows, we will be talking about healing and miracles and just the supernatural sharing with you about uh, going into heaven. I've been into heaven several times. I've seen angels, and I'm going to tell you something, heaven is just indescribable in our language. But that'll be for another show that I'll be sharing that with you. But let's go ahead and try this. Oh, let me see. Oh, let me see if I have a spatula. All right. Well, I do have a little bit one. So we're going to try this. Let me just put this down. Mm. Now I don't. Ooh, didn't that look good? I don't know about you, but I like mine to be uh, melt my ice cream. So that's why I'm putting it on now. And I'm gonna just take a little bite of this. Mm. Mm. That is so good. But I'm gonna just leave that. Well, listen, I want to pray for you real quick before I go, okay? Father, I thank you so much for all of the viewers all over the world that are watching Heart of Home Cooking. And I ask that you touch their lives supernaturally even today, that you would draw them by your spirit, no matter what religion that they're in, even if they don't believe that there is a God. I ask that you would come into their lives, invade their life like you have invaded mine. And I ask that you would bring healing to the brokenhearted, that you would bring, uh, Lord, healing to the physical body, that you would bring joy with their sorrow and sadness. And, Father, I ask you in the name of Yeshua, again, that's Hebrew for Jesus, I ask you in the name of Jesus that they would feel your presence, even your fire right now, that warmth, that love that I have felt. And I thank you, Lord, for each and every one of them. Now, I speak blessings over you. In Jesus' name, amen.